Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Platt, and I'm here to tell you my story and to um, invite you to um, my books. I'm an author and a writer. I write Christian devotional books to encourage, to comfort, give hope in trying of times. And why did I write these books? Mm. It's quite a story. Um, and I'm gonna give you my, my story of why I wrote these books and why they're so dear to my heart. About 13 years ago, my family went through a very hard time. My children were exposed to amazing things that broke their hearts. And about 13 years ago, the door of our home was open to the enemy. And for those that have experienced that, it is such a trying time. After about a few years of starting to see um, the effects of this happening to my children, especially they were the targets, um, I went into deep prayer and like never before. It was a it was a time where we had trusted mentors, people that we thought really cared about us and they just turned around and hurt my children emotionally and and mentally and it was a constant thing for about 13 years um six to eight of those years were the toughest and even though i prayed night and day and even though i praised god for the victory in this situation even though we were not delivered after many years, finally we were, but during that time we were just sustained by Jesus. And he gave me the strength to pray for my kids and for myself. Um, the unbelievable <laughs> events that, I mean, I've never been through a situation like this, where people could be so cruel and so um, lack of, of emotion and how they treated my, my children. My children were teenagers at that time. They're out of the house now. They're they're recovering, they're restoring, they're healing, and I thank God for that. During that time when so much was happening to my children, I went to um, to books to read to find out what can I do. I had no one. That, I, that could help me. I was basically by myself trying to fight this war against my children. I went to people, I went to different resources and nothing came through. So I started to read books and then I, I decided I was gonna contact an old time friend. Um, I hadn't talked to her in 20 years. She was in my wedding. She was uh, the lady, this lady, the beautiful lady led me to the Lord when I was 17. She became a pastor's wife. She became um, just very big in the women's ministry. They were part of a large denomination that supported them. They became missionaries. Um, they had the opportunity given to them. They took it, worldwide missionaries, and then they became overseers of churches and. The husband spoke at churches and she sang and she spoke to the women and they're just amazing couple that God was using and still using in a very, very mighty way. I did not know their life had come to that point where they were being used in such a mighty way until I finally got her phone number from the church's headquarters. I got a hold of her because I, I, I needed somebody to help me through this. Because even though I knew God was hearing my prayers, there had to be a purpose in all of this, why he had not delivered us. And I needed help to understand why, why not? Why 
are my children and even I, I suffered for them. My heart was bleeding every day to see the, the pounding of the enemy upon their hearts and their minds and no relief. It was really an incredible time. I got a hold of her. I told her my situation. She said, let's start praying every week. So we started to pray every week and it was amazing. Her support, her prayers helped me get through the toughest time of my life. After that, I wanted more than just once a week. So I went to a prayer line that I found and I called them and it was a great encouragement for me to pray with those prayer partners. I just, I asked God to bless them because they were there for me and they prayed for me and I just felt so much comfort and hope as I prayed with this prayer ministry. It was a worldwide prayer ministry and it was, it was what I needed at that time. I started to pray with them more and more and all of a sudden they asked me to be a prayer partner and I didn't, wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking about my children. I was thinking about what am I going to do? You know, well, how am I going to help my children out of this situation? There were so many facets involved in this situation. There was so much um, psychological trauma and um, 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 just amazing what we had to go through and still be able to mentally survive it. Um, so I, I pondered whether I should be a prayer partner and I wasn't interested until about the fifth person that week that said to me and asked me, you need to be a prayer partner, will you be? Will you join our ministry? And I, and I thought, well, if I've had that many people ask me one week, I suppose it's God's will for me to do this. So I signed up and uh, the way it works is you, you receive calls from the, the, the main headquarters of the prayer line and they for a two-hour shift people will call into your phone and it's all taken care of it's all private it's all um it's just really a wonderful ministry and they, how they have set it up and i would receive these calls within those two-hour shifts and i did it every day two-hour shift every day and i would speak to people around the nation in canada and other countries and just pray for their need. And I knew exactly where they were at because I've been there. I've been, I was suffering as they were suffering. And yet I was there as a prayer partner to meet their needs. They, they're not supposed to know what our needs are or we're there to meet their needs and to pray for them. And so it was an opportunity for me to just let go and not think about my own issues, but think about them. I did it for about three years and I increased my, my time because I loved it. I loved praying with other people. And then after about three years, they asked me to manage the phone lines. I could do this at home, online. Uh, I, what I needed to do was just monitor the phone lines, make sure they were doing okay, no issues, no computer issues, te technical problems. Um, if they got overloaded with a lot of people calling in, I would just go in there and take uh, the remainder of the calls that were being unanswered. And so that was my job, and I did about 50 hours a week, and I did it for about a year and a half. So about four and a half years, I was in the prayer ministry. But during this time, I realized how many people needed encouragement, how many people were so lonely, how many people were going through marital issues, and children, teenagers, and, and there was just an array of stories that would come through that I was there to pray with them. I had a handful of suicide calls and I would just pray, God help me, give me the words for this person that is going through so much pain and let them get out of it. And by the end of the conversation, they were at peace. So I, I attribute that to God because by the end, and then of course we always send that, that caller to, um, the main lady that that uh, ran the ministry so they would get followed up and make sure they were okay. It was, it was the best time for me to be able to help others. So I was very blessed, it was a very blessed ministry. In the last two years, it's been, the storm has ceased. 
the storm that we went through was tumultuous and could have been fatal for our family. That's how bad it was. The people involved had, I believe, just had become so evil that my children, even myself, um, we were in great danger. But like I said, Jesus sustained us, Jesus protected us, but they were still hit very, very hard. Um, the people that they wanted to just be accepted by, to be loved by, to be included in, in were the ones that just treated them very bad. And because it was just an ongoing situation that I had no control over, um, it was very traumatic for them at the end of the period. And um, I think we were delivered from that situation, but that was a long time later. And I knew that if God had put us in such a traumatic situation, that the God that did that would be the God that could also restore us, just like in Job. Job trusted God during that very horrible time that Job had to go through, but at the end, because he trusted God, God blessed him even more. We don't understand those things, but we have to trust him. And even though we didn't have any, but at that time, I prayed for the Calvary to come in. I prayed for someone to come in and just take these people away from our family. But nobody did, but I knew that there was a power greater than any human on earth. That was Jesus. That was my Lord. That he sustained us in ways that were unbelievable. But he did not take away the situation, not until years later. And now I, I, I understand a little bit more now, just because after my kids left the house, some of them had a very hard time restoring. Some of them still do. I have five children, and four of them had gone through that terrible time. My oldest one had already moved out of the house before anything had happened to our family. Three of the four children got hit the hardest. And out of those three, they're still struggling. But what the beauty of it is in the last six months when I saw one of them just fall apart. Now he just, he's doing great. He's doing wonderful. He surprised me last night, came over and said, Mom, I want to make you dinner. I don't want to make you and my sister dinner. The one that, that was had the hardest time this year was recovering. And I had prayed night and day for their recovery and healing. I came over to sound the blue and said, Mama, I want to make dinner for you. That was a gift from heaven. Because he was one of the ones that I was very concerned about. Because memories are, were starting to flood into his mind this year. And he was he was um, not doing well at all. And um, and now I see him, and by the grace of God, through a lot of prayer every single day, just soaking my children in prayer. I can see God do miracles. And with something that I've learned from all this um, story of trying to recover from what others had done to us, is that he uses his vessels of honor. He uses his soldiers of the cross. He uses godly people and loving people to come into my children's life, because I had prayed that to show them that people are not all evil, that there are good people out there, and there are, they really are, and to come into their lives and to, to show them some kind act or some loving act. And God has answered my prayers and, and they're seeing that. And that's what's going to help them heal and recover too, is to, to see other people come in into their lives and be kind to them and be loving to them.
it's a process. It was, a, it was an ama a major event in our life, but now it's a process of healing and recovery. And a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. Like I said, if God allowed that evil to come into our life, God, the same God, can allow recovery and restoration because I stand on His Word that says, Jesus heals the broken heart and by the buildings. And I stand on that promise and I believe it with all my heart. And I've seen some miracles that's happened also that God's been really good to us since then. Since we've been delivered, things have really come together and we feel a lot more joy and peace in our hearts. And it will take time. It will take time. And, and that's okay because it draws us closer to Christ to depend on His strength and hope and comfort to continue. This year, the Lord has put on my heart to write Christian devotional books to help those that are suffering, those that need hope and comfort. I wrote a book in September of this year, and it's still waters abound. Um, it's a daily devotional. You read one day at a time, and it has highlights of Bible stories, encouraging messages, uh, questions to reflect on your life, and then it has fictional stories. Some of them actually are stories of real real life stories that I've put into a fictional form. And they're all encouraging, they're all positive, they're all giving hope in those trying times. And even those strong people out there, those Christians that are really strong, everything's going well, it gives them uh, just more encouragement to keep going in their life. But these books really have stemmed from the suffering and, and the and being really face to face with the enemy for a number of years. And then also all the stories I heard on the prayer line of all those people out there. I prayed with hundreds and hundreds of people and I heard their stories and I would not let them give up. You don't give up. You stay strong. You have the courage to keep going. You have to, because you're gonna miss out on some beautiful things when you trust in the Lord. And that's what I told them. Don't ever give up. God is good. But you've got to have the trust because blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. For I don't know how many times I said that on the prayer line. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. I, I've said this before to my family. We've got to face the giants of the past with strength and courage. And don't let them overcome you. You overcome the negative thoughts. You overcome the memories that are so painful to your heart. Parents out there, never give hope on your kids. Never judge your circumstances because God is always working behind the scenes. I wrote Still Waters Abound in September, like I said, this year, and I just published Showers of Sunshine. Um, in December, so they are on Amazon. I hope that you will buy them and for the purpose of finding comfort and hope and encouragement in these daily devotionals, I know I needed it during my trying times. I needed something to keep me going. And that's why the Christian devotional books are so important to me to be able to offer the world those are suffering and, and need help and comfort and encouragement because I know I knew that I've been there. And so I have peaceful moments that I'm gonna start working on in about a week. And peaceful moments will be published next year as another devotional. And I have a few more in my heart that I wanna write next year. And then I'm gonna bundle them together um, all the books into one 
and hopefully by the end of next year, I will be able to offer a bundle of joy, which will be the title of all the devotional books put together. That's my goal. And the purpose is to be able to heal hearts and for people to to be to have an opportunity to to brighten their day and to also these books i want them to point to the word of god because the word of god is amazing it's the book of the ages and um it's the best number one bestseller and we need to remember to go to the word of god to stand on his promises to to understand what christ has done for us and who he is in our life and that when we have gone through the toughest of times that we have a lord that carries us through the storm may not cease overnight but miracles can happen during that promise during that during that time i saw a lot of miracles happen but we still had to go through it so i want to thank you for listening to the video thank you for listening to my story um i hope and pray that this video has touched hearts that the books will touch hearts and that people uh, will find christ in it will find um a message that will touch their hearts a message that will give them hope to continue because i tell you i never understood why we had to go through so much and our family Could have easily not survived. I would today, right now, it's a miracle that I'm sitting here talking to you, and my children especially. And when we grow close to Christ during these tough times, He's going to bless you. Stay close to Jesus during these tough times. Don't ever give up, because when you don't, you're going to see amazing blessings. But if you do, you miss out on them. So have a great year. Have a wonderful time getting to meet and know a Savior.